Australia's Great Barrier Reef, one of the seven wonders of the natural world and home to thousands of corals and fish. It generates some 5.2 billion tourist dollars a year and employs 68,000 people. But now, it's under threat. The good news, one of its greatest problems, is actually the easiest to solve. It's not just global warming that is damaging our Great Barrier Reef. Every year, tons of river sediment washes into its waters, loaded with pesticides and nutrients. And the effects are devastating. We're standing here now 100 kilometres away from the reef at the source of one of its biggest challenges. The rainfall that falls on these gullies is dissolving these soils and taking it out into the river and straight out to the reef. Even a light shower, you will see the, the soil dissolving in front of your eyes. All you need to do is add water to this soil and you can see it, it's going extremely cloudy. So within 30 seconds, it looks like cafe latte. You can see at the, the head of the gully up there, you can see a little remnant cap of the, of the surface soil, the thing that's protecting this whole landscape. Once we break through that surface soil and get into this dispersive subsoil, that's when these gullies start. And then once they're started, they keep going and you end up with things that look like this. Right from the start, driving around, we could see that, um, that the gullying here was a, was a big issue. The gully over here, we'd been, been trying to do it, put rocks in the head of it and try and slow the erosion down. More sediments are coming down the river than ever before and they're affecting the coral reefs in a very large area. What we're just now starting to understand is the effects on other coral reef organisms, such as the fishes. Sediment is affecting their gills, and if the gills are affected, they can no longer get that oxygen to the muscles, to the body tissues that need it, and they can no longer swim to escape a predator or find food in order to survive. Because the reef is on a shallow continental shelf, that means what comes down into the system gets resuspended over and over again. The solution for areas like this is to take it back to a natural situation. We have to regrade these slopes and actually treat the soils, get some organic material back onto it, and then re-establishing those native grasslands. Returning it to this beautiful landscape here, this is what we want as an end result. We can actually reduce the sediment loads coming out of these sorts of areas by 80 to 90 per cent in a period of one to two years. And that's what we need to do. Scaling this up across the landscape, we can make a significant difference to the water quality heading out to the Barrier Reef. The gullies are only part of the story. Coastal wetlands play a really important part along the Great Barrier Reef coast. They act as filters for nutrients and sediments, but they're also an amazing source of biodiversity. This system here is really the, the finite filter, probably the kidneys uh, of the reef. In flood times, it collects a lot of the sediments and so it becomes cleaner as it goes across. There's over 30 catchments feeding the Great Barrier Reef coastline. We're planning to replicate this at other sites along the coast so that we can demonstrate to the community what can be achieved. Greening Australia is all about partnerships. We partner with landholders, we partner with scientists. We work with these people to get things done on the ground. This is one problem that we actually can fix. We have the resources, we have some brilliant scientists that are looking after these restoration projects. In the last 30 years, the coral cover has declined to half of what it is. We really need to act quite urgently. We're only really talking about a couple of thousand hectares. It's actually quite a tractable problem. And if we can treat these areas, we can make a big difference in a relatively short period of time.